24 hours ago, literally at 6 p.m., I, around 6 p.m., I launched the Run Cult New York. This is something that's been in my mind for probably like three to six months now. To set some context, it is 6.30 p.m. Um, I haven't showered in like a day. I am incredibly thirsty. I've had to pee all day. My neck hurts from being oh, at a screen looking at a uh, computer. Oh. Um, I'm not sure what triggered it first, but, you know, um, my friend Danny Miranda has this awesome run group in Austin, Godspeed Run Club, which I may or may not have came up with a name for. There's uh, Tyler Swartz and Endorphins running in New York. The running club culture in New York is massive. I've kind of tried to figure out how I wanted to do it, you know, what's unique about what I could offer. And also, you know, I was on the journey of becoming a runner myself. You know, five, six months ago, I was barely moving out there versus now when I can somewhat move. And, and so, you know, I think it was the perfect timing. And I didn't even plan to do this yesterday until probably yesterday morning. It just hit me that this is it. This is the moment. Friday, we're launching this. And Monday, we are, um, Monday, we're running. It's going to be the first run. And so that is how obsession happens. That is how your life changes. You never plan it. You just act without even thinking about it. Like when I started this fucking movement to begin with, um, sorry, I'm, I'm just a little fired up right now. When I started the obsession movement, people probably look at it like some big calculated thing that happened over years. And it was, but it wasn't. I never sat down and made a thing in my mind on this day, I'm going to start the obsession movement. No, I was on a run. And at the end of it, I realized, Hey, what if we test it and see, uh, what if we test it and put out a tweet and say, Hey, if you're obsessed, put a black flag in your bio and let's like make this a thing. And I never planned that. It was after a run when I had 1% battery and I just did it without even thinking about it. And that is when life changes for you. You, ugh, It's so hard to explain. And because I'm the person who I love to map out every single business and every single project I'm going to start. But the reality is, while that's a cool goal and ambition, it is pointless in terms of action. And I only damn i'm getting better at talking to the camera if you go and look at my first videos there is no way i talk like this i'm saying um every few seconds and yeah i'll say i'm a fuckload in this video but at least i'm saying shit that actually hits and is real oh you know how i feel right now i feel like um if you've seen the movie limitless if you haven't i'm gonna spoil it a little bit but in that movie bradley cooper's character you know he's a down on his luck uh, author, super broke, super depressed guy hands him the pill that gives him full access to his brain, makes him super intelligent, super charismatic. Um, and it changes his life. This pill NZ, NZT 48, I think, or something like that. And um, I'm going to spoil the end of the movie. So just like skip the next like 30 seconds if you don't want to hear it. But towards the end of the movie, he, you know, he's progressing in life. He's going to freaking become president of the United States. And this guy comes to him and he's like, we shut down your lab. You can't make it anymore. And he says, don't worry. I'm off it. I'm off it, Carl. I don't need it anymore. Shut down the labs. That is what obsession is like. In the beginning, it is a drug that you are new to and you need to get more of. And when you go in those moments of all-nighters, you get high off of it and you want to stay up all night and you can't control yourself. And then you crash and you're like, oh, what did I just do? Like I... Uh, I'm not like this. Like, this isn't normal. I need to go rest for a week. I need to go relax. But the more you put yourself in that zone of obsession, the more it becomes normal. And eventually, it doesn't become a drug. It just becomes you. It becomes this nonstop feeling you have of energy. And that is how I felt the last few weeks. You should be able to feel it listening to this. I literally cannot control myself. I am in constant motion and action and creation. And what I'm, I sound like cringy right now, but that is actually what I'm doing. Um, my life has changed more in the last three weeks than it has in potentially the last three years. And, and I just feel this unstoppable energy. And there's a lot of reasons why that is. One big reason is I'm putting my face out there. You're watching this video, you're looking at me and I didn't post my face online for like four years, almost five years. Cause it, I wasn't ready. I wasn't like the truly obsessed person to do that. And so some people, um, some people might look at my content and be like, Oh, so was your content fake all the time? No, it wasn't. It was just the obsessed part of myself writing reminders to the Zach I was living, which was like not in great shape, not making money, um, just like down on his luck. It was that was the voice writing. That was the voice you've been reading this whole time. And now you're still reading the same voice, except I'm closer to that person. 
because I'm doing the right things and I'm, I'm living with obsession. I'm, I'm basically living in the office. I haven't left. I've been looking through this type form of run cult applicants for like 24 hours to make sure that we have a sick group on Monday. And this run cult was after an insane week where I was nonstop doing shit. I've been doing these videos every day and I have never been happier than this like time in my life. I can't explain it. That's why I feel like I don't need energy. Like I'm like, I'm barely drinking caffeine. I'm barely drinking water. This isn't good because I'm running 18 miles tomorrow, but I feel invincible right now, which makes me scared that I'm going to get hurt or crashed. But I genuinely am getting so much energy out of the output I'm doing. I was craving an extreme goal and extreme output. Um, and I wasn't all year. Like if you followed me all year doing anything, I wasn't because I wasn't in the right headspace. I wasn't uh, making the right decisions personally. But I did make those changes over months and over like the last year and, and really over the last like few years. And now I have more than ever feel like I'm living in obsession and living on that path of obsession, getting further down that path. I feel like I got through the dark place the last like year. And now I'm, I'm exiting, I'm still in it, in, you know, these hard runs and these hard moments and these hard conversations. But I'm exiting that dark place and now I'm going to go really somewhere special. And the, the words I've been building, writing, the words I've been writing, and the words I've been writing and the community I've been building are compounding in a way that I didn't realize until, like I said, the last 24 hours. Everything changed with this run cult. I really realized, I have to keep calling it a run cult, by the way. It's really easy for me to call it a run club because that's like what these things are called. But this is different. This is a run cult and that's what we're going to call it. I'll explain the run cult in a second if you're not uh, aware of what I'm talking about. But uh, the... Last 24 hours, I realized I've been doing something real. And what it just took was for me to put my face out there a little bit for people to connect with me and my message more. Because I think I had that trust over years of writing. But because there was no face attached to it, it was just words. There was nothing to it. And and this is not coming from like a selfish standpoint of, of me feeling like, oh, I'm getting this attention now. No, it's like people have something to, I am an example of obsession now. And people can look at me and look up to me in a way they couldn't before. That I really think these videos are going to change things. I can't explain it. I just feel like the next six months, the next 12 months are going to be absolutely insane. Like today, I got some insane text that just blew my mind that that could not have happened if I didn't have the momentum going from the last few weeks. And, and the biggest thing, like I said, in the last 24 hours that changed is I put out this tweet. I said, hey, we're starting a run cult. It's invite only, which unlike any other run club, every other run club is super in, super inclusive, super inclusive. Anyone can come, anyone can join. It's happy. We're going to have different paces. You can go really slow. It's just for fun. This is different. This is a run cult. You have to be invited. You have to be approved by me. You can tell me if you want to come, you can apply, but I have to go through your profile. I have to make sure you're cool. I have to make sure you're not just like, oh, I want to, you know, meet people. No, I want you to meet people. That's important. But you have to want to get after it too and, you know, meet, you know, people who are going to change, people who are awesome and ambitious and they're going to change your life. Um, so, yeah, the vision with this run, this run call blew me away. I think if we, I thought we'd get maybe like, I don't know what I thought. I don't know. I just knew that there was this insane momentum I've been building around New York City, around running and around obsession. And this is the perfect vehicle for it. What's insane about it is this run call basically allows someone, if they followed me, to come and experience the shit I'm writing and talking about all day. You get to experience obsession in the vehicle that I think is probably the best physical vehicle for it, which is running. Because anyone can go and do it, and you can do it every single day. And you can push yourself as hard as you want. So now, once a week, every Monday, 7 a.m. in New York, you can come and freaking chase your dark side with me. Go to the dark place with me. We're going to go together, and it's going to be great. Um, these, aren't all, these aren't really going to be... These runs, the way I want to do it is I want you, be, you to be able to go easy or hard, right? So like for me, this is really going to be my easy day. My hard days, I like to do alone. And I don't think that's going to change. I'm like treating my hard days like I'm a professional athlete. I can't do that with a group of 100 people, right? Um, and so um, these easy days, what they look like for me is probably other people's hard days, to be fair. Um, it's like, you know, running five miles at like an 830 pace for me is like nothing. But for some people that is tough or impossible but we're going to do sprints at the end those sprints are really important i started doing those because i'm training for the austin marathon which has hills and my coach uh, jonah put them into my easy runs so at the end of an easy run i would do some hill sprints and they just felt fucking amazing because i haven't sprinted really in years and i would bring people on those runs and we would sprint and they would feel alive they would feel like animals for the first time in a long time and they would feel so good all day and they would tell me that and i'm like wow why don't we end a run club 
run cult with sprints. It's going to be great. Everyone can sprint for 20 seconds, four times. It's not hard. And you go as fast as you want. That is like better than any cold plunge, especially in the cold. Oh my God, doing sprints in the cold is insane. You feel so fucking good. So that's the plan for the run cult right now. It's like, this is like the rough plan. I'll tell you because this video will come out tomorrow. Uh, this video will come out on Sunday. So, or Monday after run club. I don't remember. Um, I might, I might, this video will probably come out Monday. I'm going to, I'm not missing a day of editing videos, but I'm going to upload this video, uh, or sorry, yesterday's video, the, the morning instead of that day, just because my uploads are so messed up right now. Cause I'm uploading at 2 AM and I don't, I want to just get off that chain. So like I'm finishing the video today, but I'll upload in the morning. I think I don't feel like I'm cheating then. And just, just, instead, cause otherwise I'd have to edit two videos a day to catch up and right now i'm not at that level i'm not i'm, not, I'm too busy anyway the vision with run cold right now is like have at least 50 people probably come to the first one maybe more maybe 100 maybe more than that <laughs> um and that's just with you know a few tweets and a few story shares which is pretty sick um i was debating posting it on my main feed on instagram but it might i don't i don't think it's necessary um uh, i might just for fun because how this started was we were going to build like this super curated group of savages, just like really fast runners. But then I realized like, I don't, I don't want to run fast on my easy days. I want to, or with a group, I want to run slower personally. I'll run fast with people sometimes, but like, like I said, I like to do my hard days mostly alone. Um, and so I'm like, okay, so let's do this around basically my easy run. And a lot of like uh, marathon prep easy run is on Monday. You, most of those people are doing easy runs. Uh, and so or they're off and they'll just come and like jog, you know? Uh, so that is uh, the plan. It's like, so the plan is we're going to meet. I'm going to do, I'm going to get everyone in a circle that's inspired by uh, L who runs uh, the walks in Austin and, and Danny does it too. I think with his run club inspired by her. Um, I think the circle thing is cool. It might be a little too cultish though, to be fair, because my thing is called a cult. So I'm debating there either a circle or some type of like platform I could stand on. And then we're going to, yeah, normally I wouldn't share this stuff, but I'm going to uh, kind of explain it because um, this will be after the run. So yeah, I'm going to give a little speech about what my goal is for the run cult and how, so yeah, I'm going to give a little speech about uh, my running journey over the last year and my goals for the run cult. Thank everyone for coming. Explain to them how the run club is going to work. The run cult, sorry. Explain to them how the run cult is going to work. Um, you know, we're going to run five miles easy. We're going to end at the with sprints. There's going to be different pace groups. So, you know, Hunter over here, he's going to leave the pace group going seven to eight minutes. Um, John over here is going to leave the group going eight to nine minutes. Uh, Zach over here is going to leave the group going nine to 10 minutes. I don't think we're going to do a group after 10 minutes. I think I'm going to tell those people to stay home. I'm debating it. I have to do a poll and see what paces people are going to run tomorrow. Because uh, that kind of decides it. Because if a lot of people are doing 10 minute paces, then it's like... Do I want to kick them all out? I don't know. Anyway, it's kind of shitty to like let someone in the group and then kick them out, you know? Um, but yeah, the, the, that's the goal. It's like put people, put, put, put people into these pace groups because today I was, I was doing some recon today at endorphins running club in New York. Um, and I learned a lot. I think you definitely need like someone watching over each group, especially for your crossing streets because, uh, there's cars and you don't want people to die. And I th it's like, it's kind of fucked up. Like if you think about it, if you run a street of traffic coming with like a hundred people, it's like the cars should stop, but they don't legally have to, right? It's like, or not that they don't legally have to, but like they have the right away. It's like, you don't. So that is scary. And if, unless there's someone being like, stop, it can get kind of fucked up, especially because I really just want to run. I want to run through the streets that I think is like the pure run cult vibe. It's like, running through the streets of manhattan that is epic and so yeah i'm trying to talk through this like logically and so i gotta drink this this is really good for hydrating the, the coconut water but the purple or the red one i don't know what that means this is really good the for hydrating getting some carbs in the coconut water with the i don't know what it means when it's um like red versus the clear one but it just like tastes a lot better the clear ones like i can't really drink even though they might actually taste the same and I'm just dumb with colors.
That's good. And so, yeah, so that's the idea. So put people into pace groups, get some, gets, put people into some rough pace groups, have one person kind of watching over and then we're going to run and, you know, it's five miles. So, you know, people running seven minute pace will be there. Um, they'll be there, you know, in 35 minutes. And when I say there, we're going to loop from basically like, I'm actually not going to say this part. We're going to loop, loop from one place where we are going to end at the, which is, uh, which is a great place to do sprints because it's kind of like a, a wide bridge. You can get a bunch of people. And the way I see it, it's like people will be arriving at different times. And because the sprints only take like 20 seconds each, you can kind of just have like different waves of people going, doing these four sets of 20 second sprints and do like a minute rest coming down or a minute and a half. Um, just have someone in charge of it on their watch. And what we'll do at the end, inspired by Danny's group, is there's actually a coffee shop I really like. It's called, they have like sick acai bowls, sick uh, coffees and and you know pastries whatever we'll all walk over there we'll get coffees we'll get some food whoever wants to hang out can hang out whoever wants to go or needs to go to work can go to work but i know especially for this first one there are people who i think there are people flying in these two girls told me they're these twins told me they're flying in because they have cheap flights or whatever that's fucking crazy and so like i'm not just gonna leave i'm gonna hang out with everybody until they're gone the the goal is to give everyone the feeling of obsession that's the goal with the run cold it's i want people to leave and feel one that they're getting more obsessed with running and obsession itself. I want them to feel energized for what they're doing in their lives. I want them to feel physically alive. I want them to feel so good from the sprints and from the cold air and, and you know, pushing themselves on the miles that they, you know, just feel electric all day. I want people to meet other obsessed people because it's rare. And number four, more in terms of the running, I want people to feel their dark side a little bit, get pushed to the dark place a little bit, just at some point on this run. Could only just maybe it's for two of the sprints they really, really go, or maybe it's for all the sprints, or maybe for it's maybe it's for the whole run. You know that is amazing to have that place you can come once a week because I have to remember that not everyone's training for a marathon. There will be a good amount there that are, and that is kind of like a goal that you come. And you get more into running and you want to run a marathon or a half marathon or an ultra marathon. Um, that's kind of like the arc of becoming a runner, right? It's like you slowly get into it. You slowly start going on runs and then you take longer runs and you get more serious and you make progress. And then you're like, oh, I, it's time to do a marathon. And, you know, that was my journey. When I talk about me, I'm trying to do it from the lens of obsession and like what I'm dealing with in terms of my obsessions and, and how I'm processing them. Um, I'm the reason I have this with my audience is because I didn't make it about me for years and because I just gave every single day. I wrote this to on Twitter. It's like, how do you build a community, right? You make it about a movement. You do one thing for the movement every single day, whether that's creating a little post on Instagram, whether that's creating a video or a podcast or a piece of art or a wallpaper or a playlist or something. And then number three is you always make it about the movement and you never make it about you, right? I'm going to go work out. I need to go like do some neck exercises because like my my trap everything's fucked up because i've just been bent over i've been bent over doing youtube videos and, and running and i have to go run 18 fucking miles tomorrow on a really hard workout and my body's like oh i'm gonna go like sit in the sauna and try to like fucking clear myself out um stay obsessed let's fucking go